I'm here with Canyon and, and Joaquin. Anyways, um, I met Canyon with Gary Hold. He was helping Gary Hold explore the uh, up on the Josephine Mine. So Canyon, how did you get involved in this type of stuff? Um, so really growing up, I just, um, I've always known that uh, I was Spaniard and um, I've always gone to the mountains and hiked around and um, then I, I've always heard his stories and then uh, when quarantine for COVID-19 started, I uh, would go hiking in the um, Wasatch a lot uh, up to uh, old, old mine dumps and I would just find them on Google Earth and then I'd mark it out with the little trail um, like distance marker on Google Earth and then I'd go hike to them and find different rocks and stuff. But uh, And then I just started getting into more treasure hunting type of stuff because my uncle was into it and that's that's about it. And then I contacted Gary Holt to try to go um, work with him up on the on the Josephine mine and um, yeah that's how that's pretty much how I got into it so what about the Josephine mine you use kind of they broke they it had been covered up for 20 years or so and and then when they when they opened it back up you the first one to go in and start exploring it so no Tell me I, about that. Um, <laughs> so it was uh, I was there the actually the first time I went up there it was um, when it was when the cave had been uncovered and um, we, uh, I wasn't the first one in there to explore it, but I was one of the first couple people to see what it looked like, like going in, like the excavator digging it. But um, yeah, it was, it was awesome. And then, so on the left side over here, you can see that all the limestone stratums are uplifted to the south. And from on the other side of the mine, from the road that I was showing you guys, all the stratums are left, are uplifted to the north. And right here in the middle, you can see that there was a fracture which caused a cave allowing the ancient ones to be able to go and mine it. Um, uh, as you can see there's two different caves and the left one was simply an attic created by John Young to get ore out easier and the right one was a natural cave that the ancient ones could use to um, aid their mining process. Awesome. So, and then a couple weeks go by or one or two weeks go by and then I go up there again and that's when I finally we go in there and we were all looking around at stuff and try to get everything figured out and then we had some other people come up and go exploring down the shaft for us because we didn't want to rappel down the 50 foot shaft and um, so somebody went down that shaft and they said that it didn't go nowhere but um, they came back up and then the next weekend I went down and that's when I found that that tunnel in that video and um, it's it's just awesome. It's crazy in those old mines. It's just awesome. So so it was kind of hidden up. You found it. Nobody else had seen it yet. Or you, um, or? I I don't know that for a fact, but um, from from what I think, um, yes, because um, it was up underneath the shoring that the past mine owner said that um, they they didn't know um, or they they knew that it was there, but they didn't end up going dead down there because it looked super scary and um, so when we were up there last time we noticed just a little a little like we could look up underneath the shoring and if we just moved a couple rocks we could see that we could get in there so we just moved a couple rocks and pushed them over out of the way and then we I so we slipped underneath that shoring and then we there was a tunnel that went to the left and then it looked like it continued at one point and then there was another tunnel that connected to the 50 foot vertical shaft and then um, we explored in that room for a minute and uh, I had to move some rocks out of the way to get to a different tunnel and then it was about uh, 15 feet and then it curved to the left and I was crawling. Um, this was, was only like about this tall in that tunnel and then it opened up into a room and the room was about like maybe 6 feet and then it went for about 15 or 20 feet and then about halfway the ceiling went up again so it was like a big, it was a pretty decent sized room but I could tell that it had been um, filled up and there was slopes where the tunnels had continued and one looked like it went up underneath the big boulder and the other one looked like it kept continuing going straight and that um, from past documentation in the, the um, from past documentation we found that we think that it would uh, this th that tunnel might be the southeast tunnel for the Josephine mine but we we need more proof to prove that so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say that that's that's what we think at this point but I'm not gonna say that for a fact Sounds like you had fun while you was there. Oh my gosh, it was awesome, yeah. It was, <laughs> it was scary though. It was, it was scary, but I just gotta keep. So when the other people had that mine, nobody found that other tunnel. I, I don't know that for a fact, but um, 
I, I think so, yes. I think. And I don't I don't want to say something that's a fact that's not that's something that I don't know, so. Yeah, somebody found a Roman coin. Oh, did they? Was was it? Uh, oh, yeah, somebody, Lanny somebody Seeley. different. Lanny oh, Seeley found the, the, yeah, because, yeah, Gary, Gary told me about that. Those okay. Roman coins. So those other tunnels that you're talking about, we could break out a metal detector and find one of those coins in those ones. That'd be crazy, but maybe, I don't know. Joaquin, so tell me. Have you had any times, so you did done quite a bit of exploring for the Spanish treasure that, have you had any times when you had your heart pounding and you thought you was gonna find something? Uh, probably when I found that monk, and also above Wolf Creek, when I found that Ronaldo tree with the grizzly bear rake above it, and that whole symbol panel that was talking about a treasure just buried. And then I did go back up and look for that one, and I found a, another little man on a pine tree. And I haven't been back up there since. But there is something there, definitely. <laughs> so that one's probably got my heart going quite a few times. So you kind of, life got in the way, you kind of give up treasure hunting, and then right. the comes along and gets you started back up. Right. <laughs> and then I'd say one time in New Mexico, I found a massacre site oh, really? and found big old arrowheads. And with the metal detector, I dug up an old rifle. Really? And But all you could see of the rifle that's left is the hammer, and I still got the hammer. So I'm thinking about going back over there, yeah. and and I found a bunch of cannonballs there too. Really? So yeah, but yeah, there's been quite a few times. And when one time in New Mexico, I told my mom and dad, let's just take this road, let's hang a right. They're like, no, nah, no. Nah. Next thing you know, we go right to an Adasha site, and it talks about where the Apaches fought the Spaniards, and you could still see the Adasha site where the mules would hook up to it pull it in a circle and crush the rock. Erasta. Yeah, and that got my heart going. And the Buffalo Soldiers were there, like, where the Buffalo Soldiers built their rock walls. Because a couple of them, once the war ended, they ended up just living on the mountain. And yeah. you can see where they lived up there. And then there's the Toro de Caca Oro, that gold, the bull that eats the gold. You can see them perfectly, the buffalo on the mountain. And supposedly above my mom and dad's house, there's Geronimo's chair, but it's Kennecott property. But my grandpa, when he died on my dad's side, he said there's seven tables set up from Geronimo's chair. From Geronimo's chair, you can see everything, but there's also a cave. And inside that cave, there's supposed to be seven tables set up. That's and each, Mexico? Yeah. And each one of those tables is supposed to be the seven cities of gold. Huh. But the seven cities of gold was actually the Indian tribes. The Apaches, uh -huh. the Navajo, the Pueblos. And that's what the seven cities of gold actually were, was there, and the seven tables that are set up inside that cave. But I've been planning on trying to sneak in there, <laughs> Mouse and Canyon in there too. <laughs> so, so have you got any good stories that's been passed down to you from your family of any, of anything uh, being found? Or the only story I got is from my grandpa. Any stories of any treasures that have been out there that your families looked for or that your family knew about or? The only story that was passed down is like I said with my grandpa and the Apache chief saying that one of your grandchildren is going to find a Spanish fortune. And that's about it. And now there's Canyon. Like I said, I got 41st cousins on that side of the family. None of them's ever said anything to my grandpa about gold. That's my Native American grandpa, not yeah. the Spanish grandpa, yeah. yeah. And like I said, he wanted to give me the riot, his truck, $1,500 and go live up on Mosby. Really? So, yeah, so if he's saying that, then, and then Canyon comes along, maybe he was talking about Canyon. Canyon, you're the chosen one. Yep, <laughs> you're the great, no, I'm not gonna. <laughs> great grandchild. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's pretty cool. Thank God, so with that, um, walking. Tell me your your last name, kind of your background, and tell me about finding this monk and some of your other treasured adventures. Well, my name is Joaquin Ricardo Andres Aguirre, and my nephew has brought me back into looking for treasure in Spanish gold. And one day we just opened up a book and decided to go to Diamond Fork. Spent all day at Diamond Fork looking for the sun. Finally on the way home we found the sun symbol. We decided to go back up there a week later, explored above the sun, and I ended up finding a monk symbol. And I guess that nobody else had ever seen the monk symbol. And ever since then, everybody's been looking for the monk, and I haven't done it for 20 years, and my nephew's come along. And that monk symbol is hopefully leading to something, because there are symbols above it, and we think we know where we need to go. And Kenyon has actually found a heart 
that could mean something. Okay, and, diamond fork. And the way I got started is from my grandpa. He had seen Apache Chief, and the Apache Chief told him before he could marry my grandma. So he had to see an Apache Chief to marry your grandma. To marry my grandma. Your grandma's Apache. Yes, and my grandpa is Tewa Pueblo. Okay. And I guess the Tewas led the first revolt against the Spaniards in New Mexico. They revolted two times. And supposedly it was Montoya, and that's one of our great cousins that led the first revolt against the Spaniards in New Mexico. So, anyways, I've always elk and deer hunted around Mosby Mountain, around Yellow Pine, in the Mantis. And next thing you know, all these books with all the treasure is all the mountain ranges that I already knew from deer and elk hunting. That's kind of how it happened for me. Is it? Yeah, I, I was I was working out to the Vernal Power Plant, heard about the Lost Roads Mine, seen that book about the Lost Roads Mine, and, and it was talking about the areas I'd, I was hunting up there, <laughs> above Vernal, and, and yeah. Right, so from Dry Fork, all the way to Mosby, all the way to Rock Creek, Yellowstone, I've elk hunted, and I knew the mountains. And then the next thing you know, it came where I couldn't elk and deer hunt anymore because I'd be looking at, in the binos, I'd be looking at trees or rocks and then I look over and there's animals looking at me. So I pretty much quit hunting and would only go look for gold and symbols and stuff like that and artifacts. But that's basically how I got started in this. So you was telling me a story that your your relatives from their from their doorstep found some Spanish gold, some Spanish coins, gold coins in in New Mexico. Yes, my grandpa on my dad's side is actually from Silver City, but he ended up in Salt Lake because of Kennecott, because you got all the mines around Silver City. And he was telling me a story about his uncles were drinking beer on the porch. And next thing you know, they seen something shiny across the canyon on the old wagon trail road. And they ended up taking off, going across the canyon, and they found a bunch of Spanish gold coins. What was the actual trail? Because I guess from Cook's Peak, you got Cook's Peak, and then the other one that you were talking about. Victorial Peak. Victorial Peak. It's all in a line from Las Cruces. And that was the crossing roads. So from Silver City, they'd end up in Utah on the same trail. And that's what would lead them all the way back to Mexico or Texas to load their gold out. But in New Mexico, I met a bunch of code breakers and there's a museum there with a bunch of Spanish armor in it. What do you mean code breakers? Well, these were Spanish code breakers that could actually read the symbols and know the Spanish codes on how, what codes they used to get to their treasure on certain codes. And they could actually take a piece of paper and fold it in certain directions and it would make a gorilla or a monkey and they're all, they told me it's right here and I was like how did you do that and I go the only thing I could figure is the Spaniards had balloons and he goes you're damn right they had balloons because there's no way they can make those maps the way they made them without being in the air and they were telling me that the Spaniards did have balloons and they'd get up in a balloon and they were able to see the whole you'd be able to see everything really? and I couldn't believe it but they did put me on this one treasure but half of it's on a farmer's land the other half's BLM land and the other like third is on national forest so they were never able to get back up there to get the rest of it but there was all kinds of things that I couldn't believe I'd never seen anything like it huh. but I'm pretty sure both of those code breakers are dead now this was in the early 2000s yeah. is when I had met them and then our grandparents backyard is the Geronimo Mountains and I know there's a treasure right in the backyard with this ancient waterfall. You can see an Indian head, the pointer rocks, and there's other symbols right above the house. But New Mexico has a lot of interesting stuff, just like Utah. Okay, well, with that said, then, that's a wrap. All right, then, that's All right, a wrap. Awesome. Sorry about the no light, guys. So... I don't know if you guys can see too well, but I brought my other flashlight. But in this, it's about five, ten feet up. And then all around me, I have just all this fallen rock and a whole lot of it. And it looks like it was blown up. It looks like it either goes down that way underneath this big rock or it keeps going up. I can't really tell right now, but 
This is one of the small rooms in the Josephine. I gotta go back through there to get back where I wanna go. But yeah, so here's what this room looks like. I wish it kept going. That would be awesome. But it doesn't. I think it keeps going that way underneath this rock. But I'm gonna head back now because this is really scary. I don't feel like tra being trapped in here forever. Making our exit out of this room. There's not too much to see. Yeah, I'm heading out of this. So now you guys can see a little bit of what I'm trying to go through here. It's pretty intense. It's all, it's all blown up. Up? Yeah, it's all blown up. It's blown up. Ooh, but yeah, that is some exhilarating stuff. Awesome. And then seeing the false floor right by my foot, that was kind of scary too. Where is that at? Down at the end? Just right here. Oh, you just, can you can oh, look through and you can see. Yeah, yeah, you can see where his foot yeah. fell through. 